Hey, friendos and Larson. Also, Cal. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to found right here, youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Anywhere podcasts are available. Uh, How you doing, Cal? I'm doing really good. Really, really good. This is... Second to last video we're going to do together. This is our second In last terms of one. airing. We got oh, two more to shoot tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But chronologically speaking. This will be the second to last, to last yeah, video. Exactly. That we uh, we shoot. Uh, I got to say, we're going to talk more about how great Cal is. But uh, it's been uh, a great sure. two weeks. It, it's it been really, fantastic. Tons of fun. It really has been a lot of fun. And um, it's been. A, I love the friend. Of, I just joined the friend of ours. You guys are great. Open arms. I hope Mikey Omega is not Bum that I didn't post anything WWE topic, pro wrestling topic. I just said, hey, friendos, Cal, thank you guys for having me here. You guys are awesome. More or less is kind of what I said. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, tons of, man, likes. I think I had, like, almost 90 comments from See? all the friendos being very welcoming. You guys are really great. Friendoverse is the thank best. Thank you, Friendoverse. It really is the best community. really is. Um, speaking of Friendoverse community, uh, Matt Chat is fueled by the Friendoverse. Um, at the $20 Patreon tier, you too could post or send us your video, your text questions to air here on Matt Chat. We will answer them. Uh, let's not delay. Let's get to the first question. Yes. Here from, oh, Lost My Sanity. Take it away, Lost My Sanity. Steve Larson, this is Lost back with another Matt Chat question. And I gotta say, Steve, you're looking fantastic. I think that for him thing is really working out for you. Now, I have to admit though, I've been feeling the burn as of late. I think wrestling, or I should say WWE, has been really bad. I mean really bad. Although there are some hope on the horizon thanks to Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff, I mean change is going to be good. No matter what, I think change is good. So I really want to inject some positivity right now. And I started watching wrestling when the Nexus debuted. That's what got me into wrestling. I just found that whole thing incredibly fascinating and I was hooked. Between the debut of Nexus all the way up till today, what is your favorite storyline in that time period? Personally, it's gotta be the Summer of Punk. That's what I think at least. Now it's up to you guys. God, I really wish I had a different... Mm. Sitting on the stool is painful. Thank you, Lost My Sanity. Thank you, Lost My Sanity. So, Cal, what has been your favorite storyline for roughly the last 10 years? Uh, Personally, I, it felt like a movie to me with the Owens and Jericho when they had the Festival of Friendship. That whole... The, the build up to that, I know the payoff for WrestleMania wasn't exactly the best. It match. really should have been for the Universal it Championship. It should have been for the Universal Championship, but unfortunately they had to settle with the United States Championship, which sucks. But regardless, the build up they had, the chemistry that Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho had was amazing. They did some awesome, funny stuff together as a group. I, that was my favorite storyline. And then eventually it turned into a feud. Mm-hmm. What else I liked about the storyline, it wasn't written by any writer, and you know, it was written by Jimmy Jacobs who he's a wrestler he's Mm -hmm. a worker i did my tryout with him excellent guy has a hell of a story the fact that he was behind the storyline that he had a huge influence on it awesome yeah which made it seem you have somebody who has a wrestling background who knows how to tell stories for a wrestling show so that to me my favorite storyline was definitely owens and jericho yeah that was great uh Kevin Owens did a pretty decent job of towing the line between being in a, a comedic act for the most part while still carrying himself like a legitimate champion. And that's that's not something you see all the time in WWE. Usually yeah. if, if, if you're a comedy wrestler, you're a comedy wrestler. Yeah. If you're a badass, you're a badass. Very rarely is, does WWE seem to want to, to to dovetail the two characteristics they, for whatever reason. Um, great storyline. I'm going to go with the greatest feud in NXT history. Um, a, a storyline that brought depth, dimension, dare I say, symbolism mm-hmm. to pro wrestling storyline. Maybe it existed in the past. I just didn't know it. Who knows? Uh, I'm talking about uh, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, 
where a crutch just wasn't a crutch. A knee it, brace yeah. just wasn't a knee brace. There was real meaning behind these objects these two guys used against each other. The story arc going all the way back to them uh, being brought into NXT essentially as day players, um, uh, working their way through NXT, forming that bond with the Full Sail audience, um, where uh, signing them at a certain point just couldn't be denied. They were put together as a team for the first Dusty Classic. Um, probably was basically zero expectations they'd ever win the tag titles ever. They defied expectations, put on a series of stellar matches um, uh, against the other tag teams in NXT, Revival, uh, Authors of Pain, uh, and so on. Had a great match against one another in the, in the first Cruiserweight Classic, I guess the only Cruiserweight Classic, um, while still partners. Of course, though, Tommaso Ciampa turned on his tag team partner, Johnny Gargano, NXT TakeOver Chicago 1. Um, and from that, that moment on, you had this uh, a story that, that catapulted both of them to the upper echelons of NXT. You had Ciampa, who would win the NXT title. Um, he got jacked when he came yeah, back from injury. Ripped. He was ripped. Um, put on, I think, three straight, at least two straight, five-star matches. Um, and uh, if it weren't for a neck injury for, for Tommaso Ciampa, um, I... I'm I'm curious how that feud would have ended if they still were planning it to end uh, at Takeover New York, um, or if they thought because it seemed like that could be the case that feud had plenty of legs. Yeah, um, I, and the, what's cool about this is that we don't. It's technically not really over yet with mm-hmm, them. I mm-hmm. mean, we'll see when Ciampa comes back with his neck injury and just see what kind of direction they go with. Totally, him. totally. I mean, they tried to to tease some sort of uh, reunion or or. or uh, you know, where, where Ciampa comes out after Johnny wins the title. He's standing at the top of the rap with Candice. Ciampa comes out, hugs the both of them. Everything must be swell. He's moving back in. Um, they're going to be roommates again. Uh, confirmed. Um, <laughs> uh, the, it's, it's like it was DIY circa 2016 at this yep. point. Probably not. There's a lot more they can do with that, and I hope at some point we get to see it, whether it's in NXT, on the main roster, this is a good chance that he's probably going to be on 205 Live. Who knows? Well, I, they, it carried over everywhere. Yeah. I feel like the fans were pretty familiar with how, how they oh, were yeah. and stuff. So I, I'd be interested to see. Uh, yeah, I really like the Gargano Ciampa. That, I mean, as far as like storylines that continue on a long process, mm-hmm. that one's definitely like yeah. one of the longest in totally. the most recent memory. Totally. I uh, got a question now from Christopher Rampasad about this action-packed, chock-full-of-wrestling weekend we have ahead of us. Oh, actually, we're in the midst of now. This is Sunday, but this is going up. Uh, let's see what Christopher has to say. Hello, Larson and Cal Jack. So my question is, we have a busy weekend. What do you think will steal a weekend? AEW Fight for the Fallen, the G1, or Extreme Rules, or the Evolve Show? There's so much wrestling out there. Which one do you think is going to steal it? What do you think WWE is going to do about it? Are they going to do something surprising? What are your guys' opinion? Thank you, Christopher. Thanks, Christopher. So we got, make sure we don't forget anything. We have the Evolve 10th anniversary show. It's going head to head for with uh, AEW's Fight for the Fallen. Uh, that's on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Also, Saturday, late night, uh, second night of the G1 climax is happening. The first match is the B block. And then Sunday, we have Extreme Rules. And then late. I think late. I got that backwards. Yeah. Late, su- late Saturday night will be night three. Late Friday night will be. Uh, night two with the B block. Um, so there's five major wrestling shows happening within the span of roughly uh, 60 hours. Yep. Um, of all those, I'm going to give the advantage to the second night of A block matches of the G1, night three of the G1 tournament overall. Get a look at this card. It's insane. It is stacked. So uh, the first match is uh, some, uh, it's uh, a couple of young lines. You got Toa Hinare. Uh, sorry, you got Young Lion. I'm not familiar with Yoda uh, Tezuchi. Um, you got him, Toa Hinare, Juice Robinson taking on uh, Umura, Hanma, and Hiroki Godu. That's the warm-up match. Listen to the second match. Ren Narita and Jeff Cobb oh my goodness. taking on Shota Umino and John Moxley. We get to see Jeff Cobb and John Cobb Moxley. Cobb versus Moxley. In the ring. That, that match, I just want to see how much Cobb throws around Moxley. Oh, I know. How many suplexes he give him. And then just see Moxley get up and like. It's going to be great. Oh, I, that match alone sold me that this is going to be an awesome match. I ain't got the G1 matches yet, and they're great. Yeah. Uh, the third match, you got Yoshihashi, Yano, and Ishii taking on uh, the crown jewel of Bullet Club, Chase Owens. The Tokyo Pimp, Takahashi, 
and Jay White. Uh, the fourth match, you got LIJ Bushi, Shingo Takagi, Tetsuya Naito against uh, Suzuki Goon, Kanemaru, Minoru Suzuki, and Taichi. Then you get to the, 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 the G1 matches. First, Haas battle. Big Haas. Lance Archer taking on Bad Luck Fale. That's awesome. That's going to be a great Haas battle. Next, uh, two of the most athletic guys in all of New Japan. You got Will Ospreay going up against Sonata. That's going to be a barn burner. Uh, the next match, like these last four matches, these could main event any show. Yeah. Uh, next, Okada, the best wrestler in the world against Zack Sabre Jr., the best technical wrestler in the yep. world. They've already put on a hell of a match uh, a year or two ago um, at Sakura Genesis last year. It was, it was fantastic. This is going to be great. Next, Kota Ibushi versus Evil. And your main event, the ace, Hiroshi Tanihashi, going up against Kenta. Oh, that's awesome. Like, it's, it's, the A block is stacked. That's insane. Absolutely stacked. This is going to be, like, every other night, this is going to be the case with A block, it yeah. seems like. Yeah, Just a stacked card. That's amazing. Um, I won't be staying up till the wee hours of Sunday morning to watch it. I'll try to watch it at some point Sunday before yeah. Extreme Rules. Yeah. Um, or just try to work it in during the week. Mm-hmm. Can't wait, though. No, stacked I, card. I really want to watch that show and just watch back that. So that's just me... I just want to watch Moxley take on Cobb. Mm-hmm. That match alone just it might that you know Cobb to a lot of people that may not be too familiar with him, but since I know him, I've seen him wrestle a zillion times. That's a match I really want to see. The the night prior, it's Cobb versus Ishii. Oh, one that's on one. Yeah, that's gonna be sweet. How about you? What, what do you th- what show do you think is gonna <laughs> steal the weekend? Well, I mean, you, you you only remember the last match of a weekend. That's I go off that mindset. Right, the last right, right. match is Extreme Rules. We're going to see it all at Extreme Rules. I've been so curious to see if Becky and Seth are going to be able to retain their titles against Corbin and uh, Lacey, Lacey Evans. Evans. Yeah. You know, gosh darn, that's been on my mind. And you know, I'm and also besides that dream match though, I want to see Aleister Black take on Cesaro. Mm-hmm. That's going to be really cool. I'm excited about that. Um. I mean, these are the bigger name guys. This show has a lot of big names. I'm excited for see how Daniel Bryan and the New Day, and then see Heavy Machinery, two guys I know very well. I'm excited to see those guys go at it, just personal reasons. Uh, I mean, the Revival are going to put on a great match with the Usos. So mm-hmm. They're given enough time. Mm-hmm. If they get like 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes oh, against the Usos, which I don't know that's going to happen, but there could be, you never know. It could happen. It could happen. They get like 20, 30 minutes. Uh, I mean, geez, there are some matches in here. I want to see Alistair Black Cesaro have a good 10, not 10, but I want like a 15, 20 minute match yeah. if given to it. Some of the other matches I can see going shorter. Uh, I don't, I'm sure the Bailey Bliss and cross match won't go on super long, but I mean, see Ricochet and AJ Styles. I mean, that was a, that's a dream match. I know we've already yeah. seen him go out twice, but now in a scenario where they could have a longer match. Yeah. I feel like what we've seen so far is just kind of tip of the iceberg. Just, yeah, exactly. Tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So Kofi versus Samoa Joe's would be really good too. Yeah, that too. So there's some matches and just the fact that I've been on watching a lot of going in raw stuff and been here with you guys watching all raw and SmackDown. These are matches. I just, I'm curious to see how they end up. Um, Kofi versus Joe. Alistair versus Cesaro, Ricochet versus AJ, and then Revival and Usos. Those all have the potential to steal the show and therefore yeah. potentially steal the weekend. Yeah. Um, I don't have a whole lot of expectations for Taker, Reigns versus Shane and Drew unless that match ends as it should with Kevin Owens giving stunners to everybody. Yeah. And the the Rollins and Lynch and Corbin Evans will probably be overbooked mess. Yep. <laughs> They're not really even that manageable. But me, so. hopefully at least be entertaining. Yeah. One could hope. One could hope. Uh, next, we've got a question from Stephen M. Friend, I was just walking home. So my match chat question this week is, top, how rank top five people that are going to show up on AEW when it hits TV in October? I don't know when his contract's up, but I'd love to see Marty Scurll turn up because I fucking love that dude. And I don't watch the Ring of Honor. And I hear it's a bit meh at the moment. So I just would love to see Marty Scurll come. Too sweet. Hardy handshake. Thank you, Stephen M. Thank you, Stephen M. All right. All right, Cal. Who do you want to see pop up on All Elite TV once it begins in October? Once it officially starts. Yeah. Okay. Five wrestlers in my head that I think could show up to uh, AEW once TV starts. A lot of them are personal, you know, guys I see on the West Coast a lot and who I think would be great additions to the show. Um, one who just got released by her Impact uh, contract, Scarlett Bordeaux. The women's roster isn't exactly that thick at the moment. You mean you have only a few women stars, and I know 
Brandy's trying to bring as many stars in. One star who I think has a different flavor, style, look for sure. Scarlett Bordeaux. I think she'd be a great addition to AEW. I mean, some of the stuff is kind of tongue-in-cheek, the way she presents herself. She wasn't really getting what she wanted in Impact, but let's see how, you know, she's she's a decent performer. I've seen mm-hmm. some of her matches. I'd like to see how well she can do in AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Cobb, I think his contract will be up by then. I'd love to see him throw suplexes on everybody. Um, I heard him talk on the Jericho podcast. He's not exactly trying to go to WWE. Mm-hmm. So I think AEW would be awesome to see him be just the powerhouse there. Totally. Uh, a tag team that doesn't really get enough attention for how awesome they are. I've seen them have matches with LAX. I've seen them do some stuff in LA. I've seen them go against the Lucha Bros. I've seen them do stuff. Um, you know, they, they're kind of, they're just, they're not, they've been grinding for 18 to 20 years plus. It's the Reno scum. Yeah. Reno scum are awesome. Mm-hmm. I feel like they need more attention for how great Luster and Adam are. If you guys don't know who they are, please look up Reno scum. They, used, they were in impact for a little bit. They were in impact for a little bit. And here's the thing. They are all the way in Reno. Yeah. It's tough to fly guys out from that area. And the thing is, they're so talented. They they pretty much are the main tag team here on the West Coast. Totally. And the West Coast is such an island, it's hard to see these guys co- emerge and come out. Um, a next star that I think will be a great addition to AEW is Jake Atlas. Jake Atlas is so talented. He is an exceptional performer. He just did King of the Indies we have here in San Francisco. He lost to... Uh, Dragon Lee, who won it last year, who beat Flip Gordon, had a hell of a match. He cut a, a really charismatic promo about who he is and his goals in this business. He, If you guys haven't had a chance, if you can go find Jake Atlas' promo he gave after he took on uh, Dragon Lee, he's really talented. He can do lucha. He can do everything. And he is a great representative to the LBGTQ community. He has came out that he is he is homosexual, and it's not it doesn't define him as a person or anything. He just he just shows that he can put on great matches. He's an awesome human being. I would love to see Jake Atlas show up to AEW. Also, last one, and this is the biggest bias here. Who doesn't want to see Grizzly Cowjack go to AEW and dish out a Grizzly beatdown to everyone? Because I stay rough and ready. And you guys haven't really seen that yet. I only have a little bit. I'm out of hibernation. Let's get back on TV. Let's go to AEW. So that's my last one, man. Me, of course. All right, I'm shooting Cal up number one on my list. Gosh, shucks. Then a bunch of other people you might have heard of yeah, LAX, yeah, yeah. Marty Skrull, uh, Roosh, uh, Mako Satamura, yeah. CM Puck, number one. I'm going to see Cal and Ali because <laughs> you deserve all the success in the world, my friend. That would be fun. I hope. Oh, who knows? Knock on wood. Yep, you never know. Never know. Um, we saw a great match between Reno Scum and LAX at yeah. the Big Time Wrestling Show. Um, we all know LAX is, is legit. And if you're not familiar with Reno Scum, check them out. They're, they're legit too. Um, it's only a matter of time before Marty's going to be an All Elite. Uh, Young Buck said they're trying to woo Punk into back into wrestling. Um, Roosh, I don't know if his contract's up this year or not. It might be early next year. And then Mako Satomura, she's great. Yeah, that'd be perfect. She's fantastic. God, they, as far as like a TV wise, getting Punk would boost their viewers oh God, yes. so much. Yes. And that's like the thing. What's going to make people tune into AEW? Like, you get Punk. Mm-hmm. And I know, like, I even said I don't really want to see Punk back in mm-hmm. wrestling. But, yeah, I don't really care to either. But, you know, as far as like the fans would go crazy. Oh, hell yeah. They would go, they would, they, it would be insane. Even if he doesn't wrestle, just to show up, drop yeah. a promo. Yeah, he can show up. He can have any kind of role. Yeah. And people would, would eat into it. Yeah. He's a, he's just a personality. Well, imagine if, if, if they got, if the commentary team was Excalibur. Punk. Punk. And then JR. Oh, my God. You can, I guess, it's, you, he'd be the best color guy. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be crazy. Because he's done commentary stuff for, for like. That, the, that MMA promotion. Yeah, yeah, MMA stuff. And, like, he's, I mean, like, he's naturally, he's already great on the mic. And mm-hmm. he has insane, like, insane. Even though he's trying to, like, be bitter. But I'm never going to make you pro wrestling. It's like, dude, you have a wealth of knowledge. Totally. And experience about how. How in his mind, how shows could run. He can even have just a creative role. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. him just going to AEW. Showing up showing the first up. TV is going to be massive. It'd be awesome. If nothing else to show that anything could happen here on Wednesday Night Dynamite. Mm-hmm. If that's what their show is, yep. is going to end up still being called. Uh, next, we got a question from Rich. 
The Smash Bro. Take it away, Rich. Friendos, Rich here with a man chat question. Literally just remembered as I'm getting ready to go into work. Sucks. It is a blissful 91 degrees here right now in northern Ohio. As you can see the sweat on my head. Uh, let's see. Quick question. If... Larson, if you could have a singles career, how would you want it to be highlighted and how would you want it to end? And Cal, do the same if you were to ever go back to NXT or if you were to get called up or vice versa. Kind of thought about this one on the fly simply because I forgot and I'm getting ready to go into work so I won't be able to think of one in time. So that's all I got this week, friendos. Stay cool because it sure as hell is not cool over here. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich. So, I mean, this, this is more a question that you could speak to than I. Um, but I never fancied myself a wrestler. Never had many aspirations to be a professional wrestler. I'm too frail. I got a bad <laughs> neck. My body couldn't withstand the bump. But for the sake of discussion, uh, my ceiling would be like what Sami Zayn was in NXT, the underdog, perennial underdog. Yeah. Because I am so skinny, frail. You make story point of having like a, a, a fused neck, a couple of fused uh, vertebrae in my neck. Oh, jeez. Um, but then, unlike Sami Zayn. I would never get that huge win. I would never win the title. Oh. I'd be perennial. I'd be more like Ty Dillinger. That okay. would be that would be my, my I'd be like Sami Zayn storyline wise, sealing Ty Dillinger and NXT, where maybe I get enough uh, momentum to think it might be plausible to get a title match. Yeah. But in no realm would it be possible uh, that I would actually win it. Um, and then I'd be quietly released three years later. Wow. Well. At least I'm being had, realistic with okay, myself. Yeah, that's, at least you, that's a run, though. At that least. is a run. That's a yeah, run. yeah. Uh, how would my singles run go next? But, okay, if I went back now and I get a good little following, like it, maybe I built some excitement if I got signed, mm-hmm. kind of how they some of the indie darlings would. I would come in as a heel. Yeah, easily a heel because. Instead of me going in like an inspirational story, like, oh, we have Cal here. He's a baby face. He came back. No, I want retribution for what happened. I want to take and break everyone and just do dastardly things because that's how I feel. You line. betrayed me. Good line. All you betrayed me. You don't even know. I would definitely just be a heel, a dick, gut wrench everyone I have in my way, throw them around, just be a total jerk. How about this? So you, you you have your you have your picture class with the the, the people with your your performance center shirts yeah, on yeah and your first appearance on NXT TV isn't isn't per, isn't sitting ringside at takeover it isn't it isn't a, a, in like a two minute squash yeah so you go into the performance center and destroying oh shit. that'd be perfect because like, like I said in my video I helped put together that place exactly. I would help tear it down exactly oh you're, that'd be amazing you're there to destroy the I'm center. here to destroy the future is me yeah, there you go <laughs> that's it man ah oh, it'd be great and then they have to find a way to stop me exactly. and then I like find a way to get my own minions to join me along we totally. just destroy everything totally. that'd be so much so of course be- NXT champion. Oh, I'd take that title for like two years. Two years, roll in the sit on my throne, just keep cutting promos, and then like, yeah, be great. Yeah, oh, it's perfect. Let's see it happen. That that's yeah. Come on, let's get that let's going. It. Come if, on, friendo. It's let's not all this. elite than an NXT. NXT, yeah. We need to see this. Uh, next, got a question from Jacksonville number one, Guion Halili. Take it away, Guion. Hey there, friendos. This is Jacksonville's number one Matt Chatter, Guion Halili. Keeping it quiet this time because I'm at work. Uh, my match had question for the week. Which heel turn or face turn would make the best kayfabe documentary? Like the WW 24 on the network or any of those. The Chronicle, whatever. Um, personally, I think Daniel Bryan turning heel to be the ch- planet's champion. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, list a few of them or who would direct them. I don't know. i let you guys decide what to talk about. But that is my question. Uh, thanks for all the hard work that you guys do. Too sweet, party Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, ooh, so I like I like this question because uh, it gives us an opportunity to extend kayfabe beyond what we see in the ring on our normal televised uh, broadcast, uh, doing like a whole WB twenty four, but completely kayfabe. What do you think, Cal? Uh, one, I would think hilarious, just based on their personalities now, and like you probably couldn't see what they were like back then. Yeah, but seeing like Nash. And Hall, and then the Hogan forming the NWO, and like what that would be like backstage with them, still in still in their gimmicks totally, and totally. stuff. 
it would be great. Yeah. Like seeing them like say like uh, Scott Hall's like, man, I can't believe you just joined us like that. What a great switch. And then Hope goes, I know, brother, they didn't appreciate all the hard work I did. I try to preach so many things for them to do, and they never really respect me. They started getting <laughs> sick of the Hulkster. Well, not anymore, brother. It's all about this this new team, this new world order. That'd be great. Oh, it'd be awesome. And then just see Hogan like, you know what? I've always played the guitar. They never let me play the guitar, so I'm going to come out and play the guitar. Air guitar, my, t- my Air title, guitar brother. My title, brother. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, Big Kev thinks that's too sweet. It's too sweet. <laughs> um, I don't know how true this origin is, but it's hilarious, and I like to see it represented and on film. Uh, uh, I've always heard that Larry Zabisco wandered into Bruno San Martino's backyard and somehow became a professional wrestler after talking to him. That I find endlessly funny. That's hilarious. Like someone just wanders onto someone else's property rather than Bruno physically removing Larry from the premises or calling the authorities. He welcomes in, welcomes him in and says, I will be your mentor. And then, of course, down the line, Larry turns on Bruno. Um, and you can have it set up where uh, it starts with the, 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 the first encounter in Bruno's backyard. And Bruno could constantly be flashing back to all the moments he could have uh, uh, tossed Zabisco yeah. off his property yeah. for being an intruder and instead decide to welcome him into his home only to be stabbed in the back. It's, yeah. Every it, moment that Bruno could have made a different decision and therefore wouldn't have been betrayed in such a fashion. It'd been like... Uh, it sounds like Rocky Five to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, for whatever reason, it's like Tommy Gunn yeah. shows up and he wants to get trained by Stallone to be a great boxer. And then betrays and him. And then betrays him in the end. And then they end up fighting in the end. Yeah. Something like that. Some, some like Rocky but Five. But totally kayfabe the hell out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> I don't know who you get to play Zabisco. That's going to take something. Well, what, his son could play him. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, great question, Gion. Next, we've got a question from Tanner. See what Tanner has to say. What's up, friendos? I want to know who are your boys stable. Now, a definition of a boy is someone who has never held a world title gold. Uh, so top level belt gold could be WCW or WWE, um, male, female, anything like that. I want to know each of y'all's four boys. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tanner. Thank you, Tanner. Who's your stable? Who my, you got? My four guys. Um... Some are recent and some aren't recent. Uh, first one's Roddy Piper. I know he never had a title. I mean, he had the IC title. Yeah, the Intercontinental title. Yeah, the Intercontinental title. But he never had the world title. The world right. title. I think he would have been a great heel with that title. Just someone that could just – someone for somebody to chase. Mm-hmm. And him pulling all the stops to you know for them to try to take that title off of him. Yeah. That would have been something really cool. You know what's interesting is WWF. It's interesting what I was saying. I was thinking about this the other night while I was trying to go to sleep. In the 80s. And maybe it has something to do with the territory. I think it had everything to do with territory. Yeah. 70s, 80s. So you had Flair in the NWA, who was the heel champ that all the ter- the top face in the territories were chasing after. Yeah. And based on the system, it makes sense. You send heel Flair in there against your top baby face. Uh, they go to 60-minute time limit draw, whatever. It makes your top baby face looks, look great. Uh, Flair will win in some sort of uh, underhanded fashion or go to the time limit draw. Uh, he is... Like his whole job there is not to win the match, is to make the top the, the baby face look like a million yeah. bucks, so that territory could draw more money. Um, whereas in WWF, you had Hogan as champ forever, and they would just rotate through yeah. a constant series of new heels every three or four months to go up against him. It's just interesting the the the, the national versus territorial dynamic and how that. Yeah. Up. Anyways, that's yeah. That's pretty much why Piper Pipe never won the WWF title. Yeah. And I think Piper could have gone anywhere and done any of those roles. Oh, yeah, but I yeah. think him, like especially if he got the best of Hogan, mm-hmm. especially how they do a lot of the matches and stuff now, they could have found a way to written a way for Piper to take that title. Oh, yeah, Hogan. totally, totally. Just how much creative they have or use, you know, they've been influenced by. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely would say Roddy Piper. I know, like, a lot of people say, well, he never needed the title. It's like, hey, he never needed it, but there is, like, that honor of being a world champ in the yeah. business. And yeah. I think he most definitely deserved it. And he, you know, I think he earned it, whether, whatever. But uh, also, my other one, boys, would be Cesaro. He's awesome. He's mm-hmm. great. There's hope that maybe someday he will be a world champ and be the guy. But it, it's tough to say right now with kind of the way he's been, been booked lately. I mean, I'm excited to see the Allister match with him. Mm-hmm. I know you don't need to say there needs to be a title on the line. But regardless, Cesaro can go with anybody. Oh, yeah. He gets the highest appraises from all the boys on how great and awesome he is. But 
I, I it would be Cesaro. Um, my next one is Tyson Kidd. That one, it's that. To, a lot of you guys might think that's kind of weird, but um, I've been around TJ a lot, and he's been he's he's a locker room leader. When mm -hmm. I was in NXT, awesome guy, super talented, athletic. I you know maybe if he left WWE and kind of had like an AJ Styles run on the Indies. And just built his name and built his value because he is that talented to mm -hmm. where he could have done it. And then like maybe found a way to be more charismatic. I think he showed little signs of charisma when he's on like Total Divas and Natty. I know that's kind of obscure reference. Well, I thought also when he and Cesar were the tag team. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking that too. They, yeah. they were awesome as they a were tag fantastic. team together. I think and Tyson's so talented. I know he he's one of the producers for like 205 Live mm -hmm. and some of the other guys on the main. So he has like a wealth of knowledge. And he's one of the earlier guys that they're the, one of the last guys that were around for the Heart Dungeon, and that had a little bit of influence from Stu Hart. Mm -hmm. So it'd be Tyson Kidd. Last one is that you know, due to injury, he couldn't he couldn't go on was Magnum TA. Mm -hmm. Magnum TA was just a young stud. Oh, he was a stud. He was getting Dusty was preparing Magnum TA to be the guy, mm -hmm. and he was working his way to that point. I mean, you guys can listen to a couple of podcasts where I'm not sure who talked about it. Maybe it was JR or it was Austin. But they talked about how Magnum TA loved to drive fast cars. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he got in that car accident that mm -hmm. took away his future as a pro wrestling pro wrestler forever. But, I mean, God, dude. he To me, why well, I like Magnum TA, former Division One wrestler, amateur wrestler, mm -hmm. had the look. Had just a lot of things going for him. Like there's promos with him and Dusty. Yeah. And that back that era. Everybody loved him. Yeah. Flair loved him. Just awesome. Had a great look. It would have been awesome to see awesome to see him be one of the guys to hold a world, you know, championship. Especially totally. he was young too. He was like twenty eight. Yeah, he was super young. Like he like he, he was going to be the guy eventually. Mm -hmm. Even you know, just it ended earlier for him. It did, unfortunately. That, yeah. that car wreck. Did you ever see his that match he had against Tully Blanchard, the cage match? I think I've seen parts or the, of the I quit match, whatever it was. It yeah. was great. It was bloody too. Uh great picks all. I'm gonna say Scott Hall, in my estimation, probably the top star never won the world title in either WWF or WCW. Uh dude is underrated in the ring. Wealth of charisma, great on the mic. Um yeah, huge Scott Hall fan. I'm going to go with Cassius Ono. Um, as far as I know, he's never been a world champion. Um, at least I know for sure not in WWE. Um, hell of a worker. Has been for, shoot, probably close to 20 years. Yeah. Um, probably more influential than, 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 than we realize. Yeah. Um, the greatest combat athlete of all time, in my estimation, Minoru Suzuki. Yep. I know he's never been... Uh, heavyweight champ in, in New Japan. He's got the IC title once. Uh, I, I don't know if he's like a champion in Pro Wrestling Noah or DDT Pro or any of the places he worked. Uh, but if we're talking top belt in, in the premier companies, yeah. he qualifies. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, Shelton Benjamin, former member of Suzuki Goon as Shelton X Benjamin um, in his prime, man. He could do it all. Was there anybody better in the ring? No, he was so smooth. And mm -hmm. like he, that's another guy with his background and like how fast and he's able to pick it up and how much praise he got. Yeah, and it's crazy that he's a little bit older than Brock too. Mm -hmm. Insane. And he's, he's still good. Yeah, he's still, he's still really good. good. He's like the the he's, his his gimmick now is just all about gifts apparently. Uh, yeah, um, which is what it's cool as long as it leads to him putting on good matches. That's the most important thing. Exactly. But like. All the, the insane stuff he used to do in the early Money in the Bank ladder matches. He had so many awesome moments in that. Yeah. Great amateur wrestler. Hell of a pro wrestler. Um, still a bit of a bummer that he never got uh, any serious consideration for a world title run. Yeah. Because, man. It would have been great. Back in back in, in the early aughts, he was fantastic. Still pretty damn good, too. Uh, next, got a question from Renegade Soul. Good morning, friendos. Cal and Larson. Renegade Soul here at least for the time being. Um, identities, mistaken identities, confusing people with other people. That's a very interesting thing. When I was a child, I thought that Bob Hoskins and Danny DeVito were the same person. Case in point, when I went to take my best friend to stomping grounds, she told me that the reason that she was a big Roman Reigns fan was because she mistook Roman Reigns for Jason Momoa when he was on his early run of Game of Thrones. Uh, currently as well, 
Uh, I am fighting a Twitter battle because apparently Twitter suspended my account for thinking that I'm DDP. I wish I was kidding. Look at my Instagram for more stuff. Anyway, question is, who have you been mistaken for? If you haven't had a case of mistaken identity, let's spin it around a little bit and let's say what wrestlers in any promotion would you say could be confused with a major celebrity? Too sweet. Hearty handshake. Rock on. Peace out. Thank you, Renegade Soul. Thank you. I can't, th well, I can only think of one, one instance where someone said, hey, you look like this person. I was in high school and someone said, you look like Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh my God. And I'm like, really? all right, thanks. Um, but that was, shoot. Probably 25 years ago, if yeah. not more. Um, Steve, on the other hand, he's been told he looks like James Hetfield from Metallica, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg, and John Cena. So I'm going to say John Cena looks like Mark Wahlberg yeah. <laughs> and James Hetfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as me for celebrities, I mean, you guys have – on the friend over have said on the comments like you said Billy Ray Cyrus which I've heard I've, I've never heard that before uh, Bam Margera I got when I was a kid oh. <laughs> got a lot of Bam Margera <laughs> when I was in college with my hair shorter I got a lot of Edward from uh, oh Twilight Twilight and especially yeah. like you know when I was lighter I was lighter in college so like my face was a lot thinner yeah and I didn't have a beard and long hair so I got a lot of Edward from that uh from twilight i've never seen it so i got a lot of that uh the have you, have you guys seen the movie year one i oh, got yeah. compared to the the head hunter guy mm -hmm. that jack black was kind of feuding with in mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and then i've gotten geico caveman a lot <laughs> i've got tons of geico caveman uh but i always crack up so here's a funny story um i was at the movie theaters with fulton once and we're sta we're sitting at the theater, and the girl's giving us her tickets, and she says to me, "You look like Thor to me," and I thought that was hilarious. And then Thor and Fulton grabs his ticket, and he goes, "Yeah, Thor was on an eating binge." I was like, "What a jerk!" But wow, he said that. Rude. Um, as far as wrestlers go, I got uh, Bam Bam Gordy, and I have the same nose. If I didn't have a beard, I'd look like kind of like Bam Bam Gordy. That's kind of one of the reasons why I like him a lot. But recently. Uh, I did a match with Ellsworth. Ellsworth thought I looked like Sean Studd, and that's Big John Studd's kid. And obviously, he he said that when I was like probably like two hundred feet away from him. So that was he thought I was Sean Studd. If you guys don't know who Sean Studd, it's Big John Studd's kid. He's just getting into the independent circuit. Um, big kid, tall. He's bigger than me. He's like six eight. So that was the that's the only pro wrestling comparison I can think of. That I got confused. I don't with. think you really look like Sean. I don't think I look like him either. I mean, look at Big John Studd. Big John still looks look awesome. At that beard and all that chest hair. Yeah. Wow. Anyways, good question. Yeah. Uh, next, we got a question from B Man Patrick Sparks. Take it away, B Man. Hey, friendos, Larson, Cal. How is it going? It is very hot here. My question this week is a little play on Shag Mary Kill. I want Larson to take this as a fan of wrestling and I want Cal to take this as an actual wrestler being in the business. What is, who would you marry or what thing would you marry in the sense of you never want it to go away, storytelling, the actual in-ring stuff, whatnot. Uh, what would you kill? What do you hate? What do you think should be changed the most and needs a difference? And what would you shag in the sense of you like it every now and then but you don't want it around all the time just that one night stand kind of thing second thank you cal for joining larson and replacing steve for the time being while he is on vacation all of us friendos loved all of your input it was great us mods loved it all friendos loved it steve loved it larson loved it all love thank you to bear man Grizz, Calchuk. Goodbye. Thank you, B-Man. Thank and you, B-Man. I'm going to second what Patrick said. Thank you, Cal, for, for
for being so generous with your time and your insight and your expertise to this podcast of ours. Um, I, along with all the Friendiverse, all our mods, extend our, our eternal gratitude oh, thank you. Um, for being here, and it's been an absolute delight. Uh, I'm having such a great time, and I'm getting a lot of great support from the Friendos and you guys. It's the amazing. Friendiverse is the absolute best. Yeah. Um, there's more on that later. Um, so if, I'm gonna, if, if there's anything in wrestling that I'm going to shag, it's going to be great matches. Now, I want every match to be enjoyable, doesn't mean it has to be great. Yeah. Um, if everything is across the board five stars, it's become the norm. It's going to not exactly be boring. It's going to be commonplace, and it's going to take something that's that's nigh impossible to break out of the, the the rut of excellence, if you will. So, I want matches to be as enjoyable as possible, as often as possible. But great matches should be special. And if 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 they're the the common occurrence, they're going to lose their 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 significance. Uh, what I want to marry, good stories. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, intricate. It doesn't have to be, ha- necessarily have the depth of something like Gargano and Ciampa. I just want logical storylines that play out in a reasonable fashion that have decent payoffs with character development. I want people to be changed after these stories. Um, stories should matter. They should have impact on the people who are, who are involved in the story. Uh, finally, what I want to kill, uh, backstage segments. At least is how they're 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 staged, blocked, and directed and written in WWE. If you give me more fly on the wall stuff like TNA did, or it's it's like a documentary or documentary feel, what you're capturing is not two people standing next to each other talking to a camera. What you're capturing is a conversation that's happening backstage, as you would, you know, like a film or something. Um, if th- if backstage segments in WWE were done that way, I'd be a lot more into it. Even like how they do stuff in NXT where there's something going on in the foreground. They don't really do that as much as often. And then there's something in the background that happens that changes what's yeah, going on in the foreground. Yeah. I love when they do that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, but just the way backstage segments are handled on the main roster on WWE have been pretty much the same for the last 30-some years. Get rid of them. Yeah, they need something different. I agree. Totally. How about you, Cal? Um, so Shag, Mary Kill. Uh, you know what? Something that I like, but I don't want to round too much are just crazy high spots. Mm-hmm. I mean, high spots can either tell, can increase the story that you're trying to tell, or it can kind of devalue the match itself if not done properly. Mm-hmm. And if every match tries to do a high spot, every single match, like you said about having great matches, it's going to sa- oversaturate a lot of the wrestling. And it's just, it's like, okay, where's, you, people are just going to expect having high spots, high spots. Mm-hmm. It's like, I could have a really good match with no high spots placed on the card so that the next match that has a lot of great high spots, it, just, it stands out it more. It stands out more because yeah. that was our role that night. We're not trying. I know sometimes you want to steal the show, but also you want to push the promotion and push whoever is trying to get pushed. Mm-hmm. If you have a bunch of high spots and crazy stuff, it'll be fun. But then if you just do it every single match, it just it loses its value. Exactly. So having one or two high spots of a show or just you know whatever that's cool. But if you have too much, mm, it yeah. waters the whole thing. It waters every. It high waters spot everything down. Yeah. down. Um, also. Uh, Mary, just good performers. If you don't have good, solid wrestlers, you don't have a good show. If you have guys that are crap, they don't look the part, they're just going out there just to play wrestle. I know you guys heard that before, but I'm being honest. If they don't, if they're not good performers and they don't do a good job of what they're doing, then you don't have, you just don't have pro wrestling. You don't have any of that. So guys that can go out there, perform, be excellent, just be versatile, that can do everything. That's what you really, that to me is what I want to keep around forever. Just good, awesome performers. Um, something that I want to kill, gosh, crap moves. There's a lot of moves out there that to me, they don't look believable. And you have the common fans or just people that don't watch pro wrestling often that just say that looks really fake. And it could be, you know, I'm not really going to generalize any kind of move in particular, but there's a lot of moves out there where they just look horrible. And you just like, and a lot of guys do them all the time. Yeah. And it just it takes away from what pro wrestling is. It's the suspension of disbelief. It's taking something that looks like it, it's painful, but it's not. Uh, that to me, there's a lot of moves out there. Just I'm like, God, I hate them so much. So can you think of one offhand? Offhand, um, I guess one in particular, and I don't want to say it because I think it's a cool move, but I just it 
not really believable it's like a canadian destroyer yeah it's awesome it is awesome but it's like you have to the way of getting into it i'm not oh a the person's fan. taking it does all the work the person taking is doing all the work and that yeah. someone always goes i know spanish flies are awesome but i'm not a fan i'm not saying those are shit moves in particular but those are just i guess in my sense moves that it makes the other guy has to do more work than the guy itself. yeah yeah, yeah. no i understand it yeah, yeah. yeah i understand what you're saying so that to me is something like god i just kind of want to take those away but I, mean, I know they a lot of them make the matches better. Sometimes they make them worse. It just really depends. It depends on context. It, like it, if it's in the yeah. right spot. Yeah, exactly. And if you flow into those moves in a very, very particular way, it can. Yeah, it can yeah. come off as believable. I know, I know what you're saying. Exactly. And maybe less thumbtacks and all the extreme stuff. Oh, that should just be I'm very not, specialized stuff. Yeah, specialized stuff. Uh, thank you, uh, Patrick. Next, we got a question from Loki. Hey, guys. I managed to escape and find my phone. They got me, General America, and referee Skin Marks. I mean, referee Sid Marcus, uh, in the locker room of the Fun Arena. We don't know what's going on, but we're safe for now. That is, after they took away the steel chairs from General America. Um, there's guys in hazmat suits, guys in black suits. Um, it's been a couple weeks, and we don't even know if you guys wrote us a tough television. We don't know what's going on. You know what? That's a good question. Should they write wrestlers off television when they get sick or injured? Let us know what you think. Oh no, I think they found me. But you know what? I heard a Nemesis try to break in and punch out a guard. It's kind of funny, but she should stop. Uh, hope we see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Loki. Thank you, Loki. Kyle, uh, you seem prepared to take this one, so go ahead. Thank you. And, you know, if Loki's going to wear his gimmick, I'm going to wear my gimmick. There you go. Uh, psh, man, so if you're injured, but you're not to the point where you have to, like, if you have to stay at home with your injury, yeah, stay at home. But if you can travel and you're injured, and you have a significant role on the main roster, then, like, for instance, I was listening to uh, something to wrestle with. When Kurt Angle got hurt, they had him as oh, – are you looking at my nose? Yeah, it's shiny. Like, it, it's moist. It? Yeah, it's nice. That's well done. That's a good yeah. touch. Yeah, great. Uh, he was written as, like, a manager role. And then when Steve Austin, when he got hurt and he couldn't wrestle anymore, they brought him as the sheriff of Raw. Mm -hmm. So if you're hurt and you have a good role – you, they can write for you and have you take like a more manager role to keep you relevant. And like a lot of times when guys go home, they don't have anything to like work on. They kind of don't watch the show. Yeah. They don't really fall. They, they get burnt out. They're, you know, when you get hurt, you get sad. You don't really want to pay attention to anything. Mm -hmm. So bring them on the show, write, write them something to do. And if you can't, <laughs> you're trying not to laugh. That's great. It's so good. And, uh, if, yeah, I think just if you can travel, you can. I'd say go travel, especially if you're just waiting the last – just so you get acclimated so the fans are familiar with So you just totally, don't yeah. make this random return. So People like random returns. People pop. If you're gone for a while and you come back, pop. They do, but – Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Not only should they be written off for injury or illness, schedule time off. Give every wrestler some schedule time off over the course of the year. Uh, you can work it in the storylines. If someone's having a hot run, uh, then, the, you know, uh, here's the thing. If someone's in the midst of a hot run, you can just take them off house shows maybe, keep them on TV, uh, let these wrestlers. I agree with that, yes. Yes, let these wrestlers rest their bodies um, because if you work in that WWE schedule, working 200 days a year, wrestling 200 days a year, 200-something matches, uh, it takes its toll. And I want, I want all these wrestlers to have long, healthy careers, and I want them to be healthy when they're done. Let them rest their bodies. So by all means, uh, write them off if they're – well, illness isn't that – you know, like depending on the length of how long they're out. Yeah. Like I know Alexa Bliss apparently is dealing with something. She's been posting on Twitter. Yeah, well, that, that's kind of an example. Like she's kind of hurt. She's going through something. But she's able – they keep her on the show to write stuff for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, she, she's, she was She missed the last two shows. So I guess she's been posting on Twitter, but like she's had some cough or something. So yeah. who knows what's going on. Yeah. But something of his short term, like they're only being gone a week or two, you don't have to write them off for that. Um, that's a situation where you can work around it. Um, any sort of protracted uh, uh, absence, uh, yeah. Find a way to write them off. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next, we got uh, three questions or videos from uh, some of the, our, our, our mods, our chat mods, uh, Cody Miles, the enforcer Stevie Bradley, and Wayne Maker. And they want to send their thanks to Cal Jack. So take it away, gentlemen. Oh, awesome. Hey, friendos. It's Cody Miles here from the Mod Squad and from Discord. Uh, this is just a thank you to Cal Jack. Thank you for being uh, the better looking the more informative, easier to listen to, funnier, Steve here for the week. Uh, come back anytime. Have a good one. Too sweet. Hey, friendos. It's the Enforcer, Stevie Bradley here. And I really, 
want, I don't have a mad chat question. I just want to give my thanks to Cal Jack uh, for filling in for Steve these past two weeks and really giving us an insight on the wrestling game and developmental and the indie scenes and just these great stories that you gave us about people that we kind of don't think much of on the main roster or now in other um, uh, organizations. So Cal Jack, it's been an awesome two weeks. It's been a pleasure to mod for you in the chat. And hopefully this is not the last that we will see of you. All right, brother. Too sweet, hearty handshake. Have a good one, man. See you down the road. Larson, Cal, it's me, Waymaker. And I would like to just say thank you to Cal for standing in for that pile of human flesh that is MF Steve here. Only joking, mate. I'll see you next Tuesday. We'll have a beer. Happy days. But um, no, Cal, cheers, mate. Um, really enjoyed your insightful and your your knowledge bombs from the performance center to your stories about um, your indie days and everything, and just just the behind the scenes look that we don't normally kind of get um, as, as as fans. So it's been really brilliant. Uh, your contribution to the show has been a uh, magnifique and we hope to see you soon also um i'm involved in a little group called the fun illuminati and we're kind of looking for our one true champion got our eyes on you bruv so enjoy the rest of your time here and hope to see you soon too sweet arty handshake shoulder lane cheerio bye bye thank you gentlemen wow Oh, you guys, I really appreciate that. I was not expecting, you know, when we were going over the the questions and stuff, I was like, oh, wow, these aren't questions. They're just like. I didn't give you a heads up. I want, I want, I want yeah. you to just hear them just, just without any warning. Yeah, that, that means a lot. And you guys, I'm really happy to be filling in for Steve. Steve asked me to a long time ago. And I was, you know, this was kind of when I was going through like, a really, it wasn't that I was going through a slump by any means, but like, you know, just in the Indies, you have to wrestle and work so much and you do so much for so little in this business. And it's hard for you guys to know how much, what, what our lives are like. Cause a lot, we we have our own jobs. We have our own families. We have our own relationships, but we're trying to make it in a business that's really hard to do. And the most rewarding thing that we get isn't what we accomplish in the ring, but it's what you guys get from what we do. If you guys enjoy us in the ring, and a lot of times we don't get paid a lot. Some guys get paid well, but most of the time we don't get paid much. But as long as you guys enjoy everything we're doing and it entertains you guys, then that makes for me as a pro wrestler feel really happy. And the fact that I could come on this show, share my experiences through developmental and then also my experiences in the indies and what that's like you know i, I i'm really happy to to get to know all the friendos could you know get to know larson a lot more um i hope in the future i can do another some more stuff with you guys oh, hell yes you know especially work with steve you know it, it's steve's kind of got a different role in the show yeah, you know, I don't really know how to explain it, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. so it would be fun to see how that chemistry would flow, and yeah, you, the friend is you guys are the best, yeah. and I, you guys have been so cool, and you don't really, as a guy who was in developmental who didn't get a lot of attention because at that point I wasn't ready for it, uh, it's cool to get it now, and it makes it so much more worthwhile me wrestling now because I'll be honest. I wasn't sure how this business was going for me. I was getting really depressed with it, but I will say it definitely a spark was lit for sure coming on the show and having an opportunity to speak and get to know all the friends. Oh yeah, to, you know that it, to me I'm more motivated now to kick some ass, awesome, and be a better performer now. Well, you got you got you got myself, you got Steve, and you got the entire friendiverse behind you. We're all hoping. Uh, for the absolute best for you, man. Yeah, I really um, appreciate it's, it. It's, I'll probably say it's at least three more times before we wrap up uh, our time together here. It's been an absolute delight sharing this desk with you for the last couple of weeks. Um, as you said, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you better. Um, you're a hell of a dude. Um, I'm happy to call you a friend. Um, and 
sincerely, man. I just hope to for the absolute best for I've, you. I've, thank absolute you, best, man. So much. I really, really appreciate that. Absolute man. best. That's awesome. You guys are great. I really hope to stay as involved with you guys as much as possible. I like to be the friend of wrestling. I know Adam Mahan took that H title and he kind of ran ran away well, with that's it. That's what he did. He ran away with it. And that's, that's, <laughs> So that's kind of probably he, he, he took it and then he doesn't do anything with it. Yeah, that's not, that's, but well, that's that's the topic for discussion another day. The but I'm just happy to be here right now. Here, ta- here now. I'm in the here now. Thank exactly. you, friendos. Thank you, Cody, Steve Bradley, Waymaker, and on behalf of all the friendos, thank you. You guys are great. I'm so happy to be here. Let's end the show on a more on a, on a, a good lighthearted note here. Yeah, it's a text question from the uh, Hadley Doodly Champ. Um, he says this is from Rain Six Eight Three in the Discord. This is what he had to say. What would Larson and Cal do on the plane ride from hell? Of course, you don't know about the plane ride from hell. I highly recommend you look into it. It's apparently a flight that was after like one of the tribute to the troop show. Yeah. Maybe they are flying across the Atlantic. Apparently, there was a bunch of debauchery, a bunch of booze, some fights, so, uh, a shoot wrestling match. All happened on a plane. Um, yeah, look into it. It's, it's insane. It's, it's absolutely insane. insane. It's absolutely insane. So anyways, Cal. Yeah. Uh, if you were on the plane ride from hell, what would you be doing? So one of the more notable things that happened on the plane ride from hell was Brock and Mr. Perfect <laughs> were uh, saying who'd win in a wrestling match, like a shoot wrestling match. And Brock is a NCAA champion. Like his accolades are insane for, especially for a guy to go from that, from where he was a D one college wrestler to WWE. But keep in mind, uh, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, was a great wrestler as well. I believe he was, he wrestled in like, he was like an all American in D two. So he's no slouch. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you know, he had an ego, how great of an amateur wrestler he was. So I'm sure that, you know, they're spitting back on who would win in a match and eventually it escalated. And they, they started to actually have a match in the emergency row of the airplane, which is like the one spot you don't want something bad to happen because if one of those crazy SOBs got that door opened, everyone would have flown out. And that, that was a possibility. Yes. Uh, what would have happened if I was on that flight? I would have gotten involved in that wrestling match. I would have been like, either I would have diffused it or I would have had to like been a three way, been a three way. (laughs) Just cause I know I'm a good amateur wrestler. I think Brock would have said some stuff about me losing to a guy that went to his college in the NCAAs and the semifinals. So I would have gotten involved in it. I, you know, I don't care. I'm not afraid of Brock. I'll wrestle Brock right now. So me and him could have, you know, gone out. I've wrestled worse, scarier guys than him. So he looks jacked. Yeah. He's a, he's a, but he's not a, he was, you know, he is a great amateur wrestler, but no, to wrestle my fair share of NCAA champs. So, yeah, I would have said, "Come on, Brock, let's go." You you had a lame year when you won the NCAs. You had, you lot you beat West Hand in the NCAA finals. Big whoop! And then uh, you got you got handled by Stephen Neal, the real the real beast. Oh wow, Stephen Neal, wow. three time Super Bowl winner, starting Neal. right guard of the Patriots. There you go. Look up Stephen Neal, world champion wrestler, Cal State Bakersfield. Oh, I know, weird. <laughs> uh. I would find a, a place in the back of the plane or a little corner somewhere and I would just hide there and wait for it all to pass. <laughs> I don't have the stomach for that stuff. I don't want to, like if I saw three massive gentlemen having a shoot wrestling match in the emergency row, I'm like, oh my gosh, we are all doomed. <laughs> and I'm not going to step in between you and, and Brock and Mr. Perfect. I'd get my ass kicked. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to go to the back of the plane. They say that's the safest part of the plane. Yeah. Right? At the very back. Uh, just hunker down, sleep, do what I can, kill time, try to take my mind off the, the imminent disaster that's about to happen, and hope we land safely. Uh, I want to stay out of the way. I don't want to be peed on by anybody. I don't want to cut my hair you while I'm asleep. See, you don't want to see Ric Flair walk around just in uh, his want I don't want to see that. Uh, I don't want to see Ric Flair expose himself. <laughs> None of that. I just want to get the plane ride over with once I see what a disaster is going to be. Walk away. Probably never work for the WWE ever again after yeah. that. That sounds like an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Or I would just drink so much I would just pass out in the back of the plane. Yeah. Either way, at the back of the plane. Somewhere you just like, <coughs> I'm not involved in this. I'm like, I'm stepping back. I'm not getting involved in any of this. Keep me out of this business. Too crazy. Who slept through the whole plane ride? Someone said they slept through it. That was It was on that flight that uh, Michael Hayes passed out and X-Pac cut his ponytail off, right? Oh, my God. I think it was that one. <laughs> yeah. 
That's the best. Oh. Yeah, I think it was that. Because that happened. There was Flair walking around with the Justice robe on. And then there was Perfect and Brock. Was it that? Didn't someone get fired too? Like, they, or at least they, like, I'm sure a lot of guys almost got fired. Yeah, I think someone did get fired. Was JR on that flight? I don't remember. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm going to have to look it up. I know. It's uh, quite a story. It, it's awesome. We'll There's a lot that happens. You can't believe it. All this madness would happen on one flight. And yeah. Sure enough, did. Um, but that's something to look into if you're if you haven't uh, looked into it. Uh, that being said, that's the show. We're done. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys for having me. This is the second to last. Um, so this isn't the last one. You guys no, will see no, me no, again. No, no, no. We're gonna do. Oh, I was to say uh, later on today, Extreme Rules is going on. We'll do a live stream. Cal and I. Mm-hmm. That'll be Cal's send off. Yeah. Um. Because uh, next week, this upcoming week, we got a bunch of uh, uh best of videos. Oh, I should mention this now before I forget. Next week's Matt Chat um, is going to be a best of show. Uh, save your questions for the week after. Um, we're going to revisit some questions we got from the first half of the year based on new information. Our positions may have changed. Nice. So uh, thank you, everybody. Um, some of you, hopefully, will see you for our Extreme Rules live stream going down 3 p.m. Sunday. Otherwise, we'll catch you later. Peace.